Hello and welcome to EJC News Focus. EJC has just launched an annual Drug of the Year article. The winner for 2013 is not a single drug, but the anti PD1 PDL1 antibodies chosen for studies presented at ASCO, which changed the minds of many oncologists on the potential for immunotherapy and cancer. I've come to the IGR in Paris where I met Jean-Charles Sorio, who has been using the antibodies in lung and other cancers. I asked him how they work. In patients with cancer, the um, tumors evade the immune system and the blockade of PD-1 or the blockade of its ligand will allow lymphocytes to again recognize the cancer cells, attack them, destroy them. That is the rational basis of this new approach. Caroline Robert, also at the IGR, has extensive experience of the antibodies in melanoma. On the site of the metastasis, very often we see lymphocytes, but they are not able to produce interferon, they are exhausted. And we have weapons like anti-CTLA4 antibody that help us to fight against the tolerance, so they will activate, like if you compare it to an army, they will activate like the, all the soldiers, even the ones which are not going to be very specialized and very effective and very targeted against the cancer cells. So this is why probably we are less effective and we are more autoimmune toxicity, because we activate the immune system in a very unspecified way, unspecific way. And then with anti-PD-1 and anti-PD-L1 antibody, we are going to reactivate the lymphocytes. And if I continue my army metaphor, it's going to be the snipers, the ones who are already in the tumors because they are already specific for the tumor associated antigens. They are on the site where they have to be, but they are like too tight. PD-1 and PD-1 ligand represent rational targets for uh, an approach that will allow the host, the patient who is bearing a solid tumor, to trigger again his immune system against the tumor. This is an approach that uh, is not uh, individual based. There is nothing such as using the tumor of the patient or creating a vaccine. This is really a commercial compound or something that aims to become a commercial compound that is represented by monoclonal antibodies. So ready to be used in patients uh, as an IV shot. Why was it chosen this year specifically? Has there been um, a rush of new results? Clearly because this year it was the confirmation year of the fact that uh, the blockade of this axis is working outside the classical setting of activity in what we consider the, as immune-related tumors, melanoma and kidney. We do have now clear proof of concept and clinical activity in solid tumors where immunotherapy never had experienced such a degree of activity. And we can take the example of uh, non-small cell lung cancer, which is a disease where most uh, uh, oncologists and uh, thoracic uh, practitioners would consider immunotherapy as an approach with no activity. How effective is this approach then in solid tumors? There are four main um, antibodies for which we do have some results. Uh, there are um, compounds that are able to block PD-1. This is uh, nivolumab uh, and uh, lambrosilumab. And there are two compounds that block PD-L1 that still go by code names, uh, BMS559 and uh, MDPL3280A. Uh, what do we know now is that um, with nivolumab, um, objective response rate was obtained in 30% of patients with squamous cell carcinoma, 33% to be precise, and around 12% in non-squamous. That was already published last year. Uh, with BMS559, which is the PDL1 uh, blockade antibody, um, response rate was lower in the range of um, 8 to 11 percent. But interestingly enough, survival rates at two years in metastatic non small cell lung cancer uh, with uh, squamous histology 
were reported to be 44%, which is unheard of in that disease. Then we had data this year at uh, the ASCO meeting with uh, MDPL 3280A um, in around 52 patients with non-small cell lung cancer and their objective response rate was reported to be a single agent in patients that were as high as three or four lines of therapies, 22%. Just how strong are the results in melanoma? You know, melanoma is a disease uh, that was called the drug killer. The reason for that is that for years, a lot of companies had tried to develop drugs against melanoma, nothing was working. And for these last two and a half years, we are so happy to see that finally the field is moving. And now we have this anti-PD-1, anti-PD-L1 drugs that seem, it's like, for us, it's, it's really, I wouldn't say a miracle because of course we need to, to do it to make it to have even better results but we have a lot of responses about 40 percent of course we have to wait for phase three but we have a level of response that is almost comparable to targeted agents but we also have durable response like if we have the two advantages of these two um, strategies and now as you know by combining anti-CTLA-4 and uh, anti-PD-1 antibody, like it has been published recently in the New England Journal of Medicine, it seems that we even have more result and not m really more serious toxicity. So the feeling that we have is that yes, this is a major step forward, even if we had already begun to move a little bit earlier, major step forward and it's also a step for I would say an, an exponential progress that is going to happen in the field because now we have a lot of ideas of how to combine targeted agents, immunotherapy and uh, maybe second shot treatments. I mean, it's infinite the way that we think we can still improve uh, the management of our patients. How soon are they likely to be in widespread use? Um, you know, with the result that we have right now, we really hope that we are not going to have to wait too long. I mean, the results are so convincing. It's our job to convince the regulatory authority that we should not wait too long. Some of these compounds are uh, in phase three. So there is great anticipation that um, they might be available for um, patients beyond the setting of clinical trials, hopefully in 2015. You describe yourself as an immunosceptic. Even once the evidence is in, will there still be work to be done on overcoming prejudice? Well, I, I don't think that immunoscepticism is a prejudice. I think immunoscepticism in the oncology community is backed up by years of investment in immunology that yield very limited results. I mean, beyond uh, interference uh, in some diseases like melanoma and renal cell carcinoma, there wasn't much in the metastatic setting that immunotherapy was bringing in. But now the evidence is there and it's, def it's difficult just to wave and say there is nothing relevant. It is clearly that these compounds are working, but these compounds are, in my mind, molecular targeted agents, very sophisticated, but applicable to every patient. Maybe is the beginning of a real new era where monotherapies, uh, IV injected once every two or three weeks, might make great advances in the cancer care of patients with metastatic deadly disease. So perhaps a new era in immunotherapy really has arrived. And with thanks to Caroline Robert and Jean-Charles Soria, that's it for this month's EJC News Focus.